Here at Prosco, we are continually evaluating our environmental performance and trying to find new ways to lessen our environmental impact. Um, in doing so, one day, we thought of a few things. One, a lot of our customers um, use our products out of 55-gallon drums. And probably more often than not, these drums just go into a landfill after use. Um, two, is that these drums can be very easily recycled into rain barrels and that these uh, rain barrels then not only do not go into a landfill, um, they can actually make a contractor money if they are then sold to a retailer. Uh, and the third thing is that our design specialist, Stephen Falls, is a very handy fellow and can probably show us how it's done. The first step in, into making a rain barrel, whether you're making it for yourself or you're making this to sell to a distributor, is we, we have to clean up the barrel. Now that we have the labels off, we're going to go to the next step, which is cutting the top of the barrel off. Now, this is a good time to clean out the barrel, and you'll want to clean this out with soap and water, and dispose of the water. At this point, we should probably jump in with a disclaimer and say that we only recommend making rain barrels out of plastic drums that had not contained any solvents and you should always wash out drums thoroughly before use. We recommend rinsing out drums that had contained acidic masonry cleaner at least three times, and drums that had contained alkaline cleaner should be rinsed at least six times. Um, you can use baking soda to neutralize the rinse water, um, and once they're cleaned out, water from the drum should still not be used for drinking, bathing, or cooking, but will work perfectly for watering lawns and gardens. Now we're moving on, on to the next step, which is laying the barrel on its side, and we're going to drill the hole for the faucet to attach to the barrel. Now what I'm going to do is once the hole is drilled, I want to come on the inside of the barrel with a knife to, to, to remove the burrs. The burrs will interfere with the um, O-ring, and you will not get a tight water seal on that. Now the way this connection works, the straight line connector will be attached from inside the barrel to the faucet. Okay. Take the wrench and I'm going to tighten it down. The next step on the barrel is to put the overflow tube in. I'm going to come down from the barrel about two to three inches and we're going to install the first connection point on the overflow tube. We will deburr the barrel. It's ready to receive the overflow connection. Again, this is the same kind of connection we used on the faucet, but this time instead of being on the inside of the barrel, this is going to go on the outside. We take the nut off it and we put this on the outside and then we just tighten it down and it just needs to be hand tightened. Overflow tube is, kind of, is really important on these barrels because the barrels usually sit right up next to the corner of the house. The importance of the overflow tube is to direct, the, to direct any excess water that coming into the barrel away from the foundation of the house. Your rain barrel is complete. It's a very simple construction. You're ready to install it now on your site and start collecting all the rain water. The next step is to set the barrel up. You can see it's set up on raised blocks. It's been attached to the uh, downspout on the guttering system with a flexible hose. This is what's going to fill the barrel. Now, over the barrel itself, we've added a window screen, and this is designed to catch any, any kind of debris so you don't get it into the water. We're going to turn it on, and we're going to check to make sure that it's flowing okay, and it is. Now we can go water plants. So there you have it. You can find full step-by-step -step instructions and lists of parts and equipment on the environmental initiatives page at presco.com. So thanks for watching. Good luck on your rain barrel.